fine with sperm, okay. quite honestly. Uh, okay. It's the rasher that I have a problem with. What in the fuck is a rasher of bacon? Um, yeah, I had a rasher of bacon um, on my leg last year. Ooh. Yeah, it was rough. I had to go get like a salve, you know, a prescription salve. It was very expensive. Healthcare didn't cover it. It was rough. I'm seeing this is another story from the UK. Uh, I'm oh, going to have to start, ex- you know, maybe filtering these out a little bit. Because uh, I don't know what a rasher of bacon is. It could be like a kilo of bacon, or they use that crazy measurement of stone. You know, we could also use, we could say a boffin of bacon, maybe. Possibly. It, a boffin could it, be one of those interchange. It could be like a, an Eskimo in snow. Yeah, or the all kinds right, of words. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, or like Aloha. You know, yeah, Aloha could be definitely, yeah. yeah. It could be even a rasher of boffin. Hmm. I, I would have no idea what that meant. Yeah, I would be completely lost, like I kind of am right now. I hear the DTMMB media dog upstairs. You might hear her occasionally tonight. She's in rare form. So, uh, but uh, no, but let's, uh, yeah, whatever a rasher is. Um, I mean, it, it this, can, a rasher of bacon can be bad for your sperm. Right. I mean, that's what we're getting at here. But Men, the thing is, a, a rasher could be a completely uh, unreasonable amount of bacon. Right? I mean, as far well, as we know, a rasher of bacon could be like... It the, could be a, equal to a metric ton. Exactly. Yeah. I you mean, know, which I would, of course, think that there's going to be adverse effects. Not only to sperm, but probably the, the rest of uh, the body as well. Yeah, I could see where that might be a problem. Uh, you might have to, you know, eat more Oreos to kind of counteract it. Well, let's see if the story kind of explains any more. Okay. This. Uh This is coming from the Daily Mail and, uh, you know, from our friends across the pond. Uh, Men who ate half a portion of processed meat a day had a 5.5% quote-unquote normal-shaped sperm cells, compared to 7.2% who ate less than that. Red meat is thought to contain high levels of pesticides and other substances that can interfere with hormones. The findings add to the growing evidence that a couple's chances of conceiving is governed by lifestyle. Smoking, alcohol, and stress have a detrimental effect. Hmm. So, I mean, I, I guess maybe they should, you know, we talk about the normal shape of sperm. I guess it's the uh, the classic, uh, you know, cartoony shaped sperm with the, the, the head and the tail and everything. I, want, I wonder what this is shaped like if it's if it's abnormal. And I wonder if uh, frying it up and, you know, putting it on uh, some toast with an egg makes it any better. Yeah, you know, and I have a problem with this story. I, I have to wonder about these British scientists, man, these rasher boffins. These guys. boffins. Uh, red meat is thought to contain high levels of pesticides. What does red meat have to do with bacon? Isn't bacon pork, and isn't that the other other white meat? Right, right. It, it has nothing to do with red meat as far as I'm concerned. Actually, I don't think it's the other other white meat. I think it's just the other white meat. Well, in this case, if it was sperm bacon or whatever, it might be the other other white meat. Sperm bacon? <laughs> Sounds pretty. Sounds pretty appealing, huh? I mean, uh, the, the only way I can think is, you know, I don't understand the story, and it, it's obviously propaganda from the anti-bacon lobby. I mean, yeah, yeah, the anti-bacon lobby. Yeah. I mean, there has to be such a thing out there. I'm, I'm not sure who would be against bacon, except for maybe maybe those crazy vegans and boffins, and you know. Yeah, well, you know, back yeah, there was a there was a time uh, there was somebody like. You know, Porky Pig. You know, was a sta- uh, you know outspoken activist against bacon for years. Okay. You know, so. Arnold from Green Acres. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, another big name. Uh, babe. I mean, one of the reason that Babe, you know, became a pig in the city was his, you know, his anti-bacon efforts, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. his nonprofit that he ran. Yeah, and we all know those uh, Chick Fil A cows. What they've done in the uh, the, uh, yeah. the red meat industry. Uh, so yeah, there's there's certainly. Uh, could be, I guess, some, anti- some anti-bacon nights out there. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's a shame. Well, you know what time it is, Chris? Uh, is it time for our sponsor? That's what that is. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Once again, our sponsor this week is Smitzers. If you listen to this show regularly, you know that Smitzers is our fine, fine sponsor for many episodes. And this week, they bring you Smitzers Butt Waxing Kit. Mm. Before you get on your groove, make that ass shiny and smooth. When you shake your derriere, make sure it's free of unsightly hair with your very own Smitzer's butt waxing kit. This product is not intended for children and or animals. And also, I'm going to do a a real thing this week. Uh, It's not really so much a sponsor as uh, we're going to start some affiliate stuff here. And uh, for all your electronic needs, like computers and shit, and, you know, you got to have something to listen to this show on. So maybe a new uh, iPod Touch or uh, something of that nature. Well, I suggest you go to Best Buy and buy it with our special link and support the show. You could go to 
Google and type in Best Buy and click that top link, or you could just type dtmmbmedia.com slash Best Buy. So I much mean, more convenient, really. I know, really. It's it's a lot easier to shop that way, I think. Uh, I mean, come on. You've had your eye on that 80-inch flat screen anyway, so just use that dtmmbmedia.com slash Best Buy link and, and buy it today. Maybe buy several hundred of them. Well, you know what what really has me excited about this with our new affiliation with Best Buy is just think how easy it's going to be to pick up a cybernetic monkey butler when they're available. I'm sure I'm sure Best Buy will cover those. And they'll cover it with their uh, excellent uh, Boffin Squad coverage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, did you hear about what happened to Michael Bay? Uh, Michael Bay, the director? Yes. He was attacked on the set of The Transformers, which I guess oh. is at part seven now. What I don't know. What's, I think they're rebooting it. They're starting over. Reboot. All right, it's reboot time. This is from USA Today. Thursday was a wacky day at work for director Michael Bay, but what day isn't a, a wacky day at work for Michael Bay? Uh, he was reportedly attacked by two men while filming the latest installation of the Transformers movie franchise in Hong Kong. Local police tell Reuters that Two young men, who were brothers, approached Bay, and the younger sibling demanded that he hand over nearly thirteen thousand dollars. Nearly thirteen. I mean, did he? He just picked a number and said, "Hand it over." He, he, you may I, have had fifty grand on him. I think he. Well, he probably demanded, "I want twelve thousand nine hundred and thirty-five dollars," and and they just kind of rounded it up. Nearly, yeah. Of course, that would have been in, I guess. Chinese uh, currency, which is, of course, the Hong Kong. I don't know what the what is Chinese. It's, it's, the, it's the yuan, isn't it? Or the how do you say that? Yeah, yeah. yuan. Mm-hmm. Um, well, another, there's a little bit more of this story, Vince. I'm not sure if you if you caught this part, but immediately afterwards, Bay was criticized for his part in the robbery. Um, that it was way over the top and simply it contained simply mindless violence, no substance at all. One boy, bystander even noted that his childhood was practically ruined by the robbery and why he, he couldn't be robbed by a classic robbers, you know, with mask and black and white striped suits. Mm-hmm. But no, instead they were racist Chinese take on two brothers, much like the jive talking cars and Transformers 2. I'm just sick of this. And what's it, really disappointing about this, Jackie Chan was not there. Oh, yeah. That would have been a perfect opportunity. I mean, you'd think that Michael Bay. Right. Of right, all right. the directors mm-hmm. would see the, the the mass appeal of Jackie Chan being cast as one of these brothers. Right. I mean, and it's just like Michael Bay to be over the top in these robberies, you know, especially, I mean, who gets robbed for $13,000? Right. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, I could see $300, maybe a cell phone, but no, typical Michael Bay over the top has to get robbed for $13,000. Yeah, man, I mean, give it a rest, Bay. I mean, seriously. seriously. <laughs> Um, well, for our next story, um, this I think this is really really pertinent to you know our society today. But Dr. Manny Alvarez um, has been quoted as uh, saying that America's obsession with The Walking Dead is hurting our society. Is it is it seriously hurting our society? Well, Alvarez would argue yes. Hate me all you want, or call me paranoid and misinformed, but there is one common theme that is pervasive in American pop culture today: violence. Even more specifically. Zombie violence. The idea of zombie-infested world inspires fantasies of monsters possessed by an uncontrollable rage to kill. And viewers get a thrill imagining what it would be like to partic- participate in this new world order. You know, I, I kind of agree with Dr. Manny here. It, it is kind of over the top the way we're uh, portraying zombies. I mean, isn't it about time that we had a little more zombie tolerance in today's society? I mean, zombie rights may be the most important issue of our time. Honestly, I mean, if you think about it, now that we've put an end to the blue meth problem, you yeah, know, that was yeah. that was just taking over Albuquerque. I think it's about time that we allow zombie marriage and give zombie spouses equal rights. You know, where previous generations would have just first looked to decapitation or maybe a bullet right through the head. I think it's time that we use both our hearts and our brains. In this issue, sorry, sorry for that last part. I, 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 it's such a, I know it's a serious, serious matter. I just couldn't resist. No, I, you know, in, in fact, I'm a little offended that you would poke fun at this because honestly, people need to realize that this is a real issue. I mean, just last week we did a story where a man was told by a judge, quoting the law, that the fact that he had been declared dead three years earlier, or it didn't even matter. You're like, there's a, a statute of limitations. Uh, when you can be declared alive after you've been declared dead. Now, with I mean, that just opens this up I mean, legally. Just to be just declared, zombies yeah, everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I just mean, to be declared dead. And he's like, I'm a zombie. I 
still feel in kind of obscure and undisclosed ways that scientists can't explain. You yeah, know? yeah, and, and you know, it just it just surprises me that in this day and age that we, you know, that we're not, ex- you know, you have to be alive. Mm-hmm. To be extended the rights of every other American. I if mean, an insatiable need to eat brains is wrong, I'm not sure I want to be right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, we need some. We maybe just need to, you know, rethink the Constitution, and you know, maybe instead of live dead, you know, we need a half dead, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, sort of uh, uh, undead. Yeah, or undead. undead. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that would throw in like vampires too. Oh, that's We're true. Not even that's talking true. about that. Right, that right, right. But I mean. And I, and I think that's where people have a problem. They're like, what's next? You know, we allow vampires to get married, Frankensteins, you know, werewolves. And, well, and Frankenstein, it, the monster, he did get married. He had a bride. He did have a bride. I, but well, it, well. But it was in you... Iowa, I believe. Okay, okay. So I think uh, that was just one of the states that allowed it. So uh, it, was like, it was like Iowa and Vermont, I think. Right, right, at the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we need to open that up to everybody. And I think that's kind of the hesitation to just open the floodgates to uh, zombies. Well, that and all the brain eating, you know. Well, the brain eating can be a bit of a turnoff. It really can. But um, hey, look at it this way, though. At least it's not pork, right? right. You it's don't not ha- bacon. You don't have to eat a brain, you know? Right, exactly. So, so why should I care if this person eats a brain? Yeah, I know? mean, if, if he wants to eat brains and I want to eat rashers of bacon... You know, right? What the mm-hmm. hell does it matter? Well, your sperm count. And well, I'm excited like for my that. sperm yeah, count, yeah. but I really don't think the zombie cares too much about my sperm count. But he might. Yeah, it's all according about the you know the necrophiliacs. You know, I guess there's a you know okay. I mean, there's something. That's there. true. The whole necrophilia angle. You know, now that I think about it, maybe this extending rights to the zombies isn't that good an idea. I, I find that, I find their lifestyle to be kind of disgusting. The necrophilia part, anyway. Well, I, I I try to keep an open mind and usually try to open their minds as well with a broadsword, if possible. Right, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, that does work. Okay, uh, so uh, apparently there's another story out here about uh, about what makes a man sexy, and apparently it's a low it's a low voice. Ooh, the sound of someone's voice can affect how we think of them. Doctor Julian O'Connor from McMaster. University or McMaster Bay University, if you know what I'm saying, in Canada said, according to the Daily Mail, until now it's been unclear why women like voices of men who might cheat. Apparently, uh, low voices are, are a correlation to uh, men that cheat, but uh, we found that the more women thought these men would cheat, the more they were attracted to them. For a brief relationship. Now, we, we know this. We've seen this firsthand. They like the bad boys. Yeah. And apparently they like the bad boys with deep voices. Uh, in a study involving 87 women who listened to men's voices that were manipulated to sound higher or lower. I've done that a couple times in Audacity. Yeah. Afterwards, the women were asked to choose which men they thought were more likely to cheat and who they found more attractive for long or short relationships. I prefer those short relationships. So apparently they found out that uh, these women, they like deep voices, they like the bad boys, and uh, I think there's some truth to this. No, I, I agree. I think there's some truth to this, too. I, I, I don't know if you could really, if it picked up on the podcast or not, but you could actually hear the, the sounds of panties dropping during Spike's intro this uh, tonight at the beginning of the show. Yeah, there was audible thumps, which kind of worries me a little bit when I hear an audible thump from uh, the panties dropping. Well, some of them were some big, curvy Latino <laughs> Latino women, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, wearing the big, wearing the big draws. Yeah, when, but, I, when I hear that, I'm like, ooh, baby, her cardiovascular health is in question. But, I mean, we've all heard of the Barry White and Isaac Hayes effect. Sure, of course. Yes. Yeah. That explains it all. Uh, You know, uh, interestingly enough, uh, the DTMMB media fart scientists have not found that bassier farts are more attractive than, say, squeakers. Mm -hmm. Um, Though, personally, I do appreciate a good fart done on a mahogany plank. You know, nice deep bass. So mahogany planks are good for farting? For, like, you know, resonating your farts? According to our fart scientists. Okay, uh, yeah. okay. According to our fart scientists. Uh, I, I have, you know, I've, I've heard it. I would assume that's true, and the fart scientists have studied it uh, quite intently. I'm sure they have. I mean, what else? I mean, if you're a fart scientist, you know, or, or, I know we've, they've already done some extensive work in shower farts, which is a whole new, you know, right. exciting new um, area of, of expertise. Right, never before explored. And now they're kind of going more for, you know, let's, let's, let's see if the base of your fart is more attractive to women. Though I understand some of the research stinks a little bit, uh, <laughs> I think this one's probably on point. 
<laughs> right. Um, well, here's an interesting story. I, I'm on fire, by the way. <laughs> you, you are. You are. Uh, uh, here's an 